Hey everybody, I'm Sam Gross with Electric Bike Report, and in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Bowles Grinder Evo Lite. This is Bowles Fuzua equipped electric gravel bike, and we're gonna see how this thing does. So normally, I would be in a kit for something like this, but unfortunately I've broken my wrist and I'm on doctor's orders to not ride. So we've invited my electric bike report colleague, Pierce Kettering, to come and serve as our test rider today. But Pierce is not a road or a gravel rider. He's got very, very little experience on these types of bikes, which is normally why I do this type of review. So, but this is actually a really nice thing because this bike is not a bike for experienced gravel riders. This is a bike that is designed for the gravel curious and those who are new to that type of the sport. It's actually a all road bike. It's a cross between a road bike and a gravel bike. So it shares some features on both sides and it's made to be both comfortable on pavement and on the gravel. You heard Sam mention how this bike falls somewhere in between a gravel bike and a road bike. And as someone who doesn't come from either background and in learning, I am really seeing that come into play here. This bike has a little bit more voluminous tires that have seemed to really help even out a lot of the braking bumps I'm experiencing on these rougher roads. And the geometry is a little bit more capable for these off-road conditions. The stem is shorter, so the handling is a little more snappy. You're not as uh, spread out on the bike as you would be on a full-blown road bike. And it does give me kind of that in-between feeling where I'm still able to be on these roads where it's a little bit more washboardy, but still like I have that road bike efficiency. So as far as handling goes overall, I think Bowles has really designed this bike to be capable on the descents to a point where I'm pretty comfortable going fast downhill, even though it's a drop bar bike, which is definitely not my background as I mentioned. So this right here, what I got in my hand is the entire Fuzua drive system, aside from one small part and the very small display, but inside this is, this is called the drive pack, and inside of it, you've got a 36 volt, seven amp hour battery, which from about right here up is the battery, and then below it, you've got the 255 watt motor. And so how this whole thing works is right here at the bottom is a coupler, which ties in to a coupler here in the bottom bracket and it drives a mechanical gear system that then turns the cranks and puts power down to the rear wheel. And so this is a really cool system for a couple of reasons. And one, it's, it's fairly light. Uh, this whole drive pack here weighs about eight pounds and it's also removable from the bikes. And you can buy a blank cover that goes over this open spot in the frame. So if you choose to ride this as a traditional non e-bike, gravel bike, you can do that and you can save weight. The other thing that this drive system does that's really, really neat, it is incredibly stealthy and discreet. So as I'm sure you can see from looking at this frame, the down tube where this is all housed is slightly enlarged, but it's not obnoxious. And the bottom bracket in particular, where on some e-bikes, it's just like this bulbous big thing because the whole motor and the whole gearing and everything that turns the cranks is sitting in that spot. It's just big and bulbous and obvious that it's an e-bike. And on this, it's really not. That gearbox that's down here is very, very small and discreet. So in addition to being a very good e-bike motor, it's just nice and stealthy. One of my favorite parts about this bike and really the Fuzua system in general is this super, super discreet, it's not even a display, it's really just a touchpad. So the grinder has no sort of display or really reminders that this is an e-bike on the handlebars. The only control that you have over the motor and really the only reminder that you have that it's an e-bike is this little guy right here. So in the middle of it is the power button. This is how you turn this bike on and off. And it's also got five LED lights right here. They're gonna show you your pedal assistance level. There's three of those. And then it's gonna tell you how much battery you have left. In addition to that, on these flat sections on the bottom 
and below this button, this is how you actually cycle through your pedal assist settings. So it's a really minimalist and discreet system and it's something that I personally really like. I love e-bikes that let you forget that they're an e-bike. It's kind of what this bike is designed to do. It's, it's made for bike riders who just kind of want to go for a ride and don't want to be overwhelmed by their, their motor. Bulls also has a really nice app that goes along with the Fazua drive system. It lets you get into a little bit more of the settings. It also can function as a GPS and a trip planner and track where you're going. But I really found myself just using this display um, and kind of relying on just pedaling the bike. It was really nice. So the Fazua motor has three different pedal assist settings. It's Breeze, River, and Rocket. And Breeze is the easiest setting, gives you about 100 watts of additional energy from the motor. River gives you about 210 watts, and then Rocket, which is the highest assist setting, gives you the full 255 watts from the motor. So I really found myself riding this bike a lot in that middle set setting, the river mode. And that's because it's just 210 watts is plenty. This bike is made to be fitness oriented. It's a performance gravel bike. It's that 210 watts is a lot in addition to what your legs put down. And then on steeper hills, which we're at the top of a fairly steep hill right now, and Pierce is gonna actually ride the bike up this hill to show you how this motor does going uphill. Rocket was fantastic. It, it climbs at a really considerable pace. And then that breeze mode, the lowest assist level, it's just a nice gentle push. I used it a lot on deadpan flat roads and on downhills to conserve battery. Um, I could typically ride this bike between 35 and 40 miles, toggling between all of the different assist settings. Pierce, I know, has done the range test on this bike, and we'll get into that later, but he has gone very far on this thing on a single charge. It's for a fairly small battery. It does a really nice job, and it goes a long way. So we are starting this climb on a Strava segment called Unnamed Road with the bike turned completely off. This is going to give us a very good idea of how this bike operates when it comes to the efficiency, not referring to the motor or battery. Obviously the motor and battery are going to help you quite a bit, but how is this bike when it comes to efficiency with those off? We're finding out. And as this road gets steeper, it is going to tell the story of how this bike is. And I guess, how I am as a tester. So if you're wondering about my nutrients, I drank a six pack of beer and I ate a California pizza kitchen pizza all before I did this. There's your secret cycling tip for those who've made it this far. All right, guys, we are on the final pitch of this hill. And with this bike turned off, I'm actually impressed how well it's doing. You definitely know there's a battery in there weight wise but the way it pedals would make you think otherwise. And there it is. There's our segment. So we are beginning that same segment. This time we are in the highest assist level. That gives us that 255 watts of power. And the way this power engages honestly just makes me feel superhuman. There isn't much of a delay. There isn't much of a kick. It engages very seamlessly in a way where it just feels like it's making up whatever power I can't put down to maintain the gear that I'm in. So I was just talking to the rest of the team before we started this effort, and I was thinking I could be in the big chain ring all the way up this hill. Time will tell here in a couple minutes, but so far so good. I'm already noticing the efficiency of this motor. 
what you guys don't see on camera is they're dangling a hot dog off the back of the car. And that's my incentive here. The bike's actually off. I just want that hot dog. It's a lot easier to get into the zone on the high pedal assist level. It's keeping my heart rate at 143 is what I'm at right now. I'm willing to bet I was around 180 on the other bike. I'll touch base with you guys on those results once I'm done with the hill test. But the fact that I'm still talking to you, the fact that I'm still talking to you guys should speak numbers to how this bike can take off some of that load from the rider. And it's not like I'm not getting a workout here. As I've mentioned, it's just more consistent with the power output that I'm putting out. I'm not having to shift as much. I'm just focused on having a good time more. And while I could never see myself being a roadie, I could see myself being an e-hybrid gravel roadie after riding this bike. It's a lot of fun. All right, we're on our final pitch here. So usually it's me off the back of the camera car gasping for air and struggling during these hill tests for these performance bikes. Uh, but Pierce, this time it was you, so the silver lining in my broken wrist is I didn't have to do it today. But so this hill behind us is about a mile and a half long, a little bit longer, and a seven and a half percent grade on average. So it's pretty exemplary for what you might encounter on this bike in the real world. And you did two laps of it you know mm -hmm. once with no assistance to see how it feels just riding as a normal bike and once at max assistance to see what this motor can really do for you and how did it feel so on no assistance i was actually pretty impressed by how much it felt like a normal bike below me when it came to how hard it was to push up the hill i was expecting it to feel a lot more weighed down by the fact that it has a motor and battery that weren't in use but i was impressed they have definitely designed this bike to where you can still utilize it as just a normal bike, um, but I, I was working a lot harder on that minimum assist test than I was on the maximum assist. Um, when it comes to the max assist on this bike, it feels like it took over for me when I couldn't get my cadence to where it needed to be. I didn't have to shift as much. The bike took over for me when things got a little steeper, so I didn't have to shift into an easier gear. I just had to maintain that power output. So. The motor is really there to pick up the slack that you can create and really allow you to maintain the same amount of wattage output from your legs. That was my gatherings. So in your two laps, what was the difference in times? So about four minutes actually. When the bike was turned completely off, I got 12 minutes and 47 seconds. And then when the bike was on maximum assist, I got eight minutes and 35 seconds. That's a considerable difference. I mean, that, that really demonstrates what the motor is doing for you. It, it does. And on that max assist, I was really able to take in what was around me. I wasn't in the pain cave to the point where I, I, I was still able to look around and observe the nature around me, which is part of riding. And ultimately, it just gave me a little bit more pleasant experience. Um, my data also showed my heart rate was about 30 BPM less on average. So considerably different there as well. That's really cool. So mm. before I broke my wrist, I got to spend a good amount of time on this bike. So I've already got my own preconceived notions for how it rides. But this thing is really designed to be accessible for the new gravel or kind of all road rider. It's, it's at a price point with affordable componentries right below that $4,500 mark. And it's also designed to kind of be a jack of all trades to go back and forth between road and gravel and kind of attract that person that might be gravel curious. And so Pierce, you're actually a great person to do these yeah. tests because you're a mountain biker who 
doesn't ride gravel or road, but mm-hmm. is kind of interested in it. So what's your take on how this thing rides? Well, I have think, I think they've built it with what you just explained in mind. And you can see it through some of the componentry that you have on this bike. For example, the shorter stem here really tailors to someone like me where I'm used to a shorter stem on my mountain bike. The steer path feels a lot more natural to me that way. Where I am relative to the fork sweep and front tire feels a lot more natural. And you'll see these tires are a little bit more knobby and voluminous than your average road tire. This really does make for that hybrid feeling that you were talking about. The price point is reasonable for what you're getting. And for someone like me who isn't the most experienced in gravel or road, it does feel like that good median between the two. And kind of hitting on that stem a little bit more, one thing that I'm told they've really focused on with this bike is to make sure that it's got a little bit more of an upright and comfortable riding position. A lot of road bikes, a lot of the more competitive performance oriented gravel bikes even, have a really bent over, really kind of flat ride position. Mm-hmm. And this is a little bit more closer to probably what you're used to on a mountain Yeah, bike. yeah, I did notice that now that you bring that up. So the grinder comes with a full Shimano M7000 road group set. So this is one of the examples of how this bike is a crossover between a gravel and a road bike, because this is not a gravel drivetrain. This is a road drivetrain, but it does a really good job on this bike and Bowles did some nice considerations to make sure that this bike is a little bit more capable on some of the steeper and more technical terrain that you might find like out here on a gravel road. So the first thing they did is they put a compact crank set on this bike, which is a 50 to 34 chain ring, which is the smallest crank set you typically see on a road bike. And in the rear, they did an 11 through 32 tooth cassette, which is a wider range than the standard 28 tooth climbing gear that you get on a road drivetrain. Again, kind of a nice feature of the Shimano 105. Something that you don't get with this that you sometimes would normally see on a gravel bike is you don't get a clutch type rear derailleur, which is something that comes from the mountain bike world. And what that clutch does is it actually stiffens up the rear derailleur when you're on rough terrain like braking bumps or washboardy roads and it keeps the chain from slapping around. Not only does that keep the drivetrain a little quieter, it also helps you keep prevent prevent dropping the chain. Excuse me, I'm getting tongue tied here. But we found that this drivetrain has done a really nice job and it's a really nice balance between that road and that gravel side of things. You get a nice ratio for climbing and for going fast on flat roads It's done a really nice job for us. In addition to that, this bike also comes with Shimano 105 hydraulic disc brakes, which have served us really, really nicely. They have 160 millimeter rotors front and rear, but the fact that this thing has one disc brakes and two that they're hydraulic is a really nice feature for a bike that really doesn't cost that much for a performance gravel bike. But these brakes have served us really, really well. We're out here on some fairly steep and long descents on these gravel roads and it's done really really nicely no no brake fade no heating up no anything like that i love shimano brakes so in our circuit test which is one of our hallmark tested electric bike report that demonstrates how the bike performs in each of its pedal assistance levels this is kind of a tricky one to test and that's for two different reasons the first is this is a class one e-bike meaning the motor cuts off at 20 miles an hour and it's pedal assistance only and two This is a really, really efficient bicycle, even before being an e-bike. It cruises close to that 20 mile an hour hour mark very, very easily. And we captured that in our circuit test. So this test is a one mile loop. It's the closest thing to a closed course we can do. There's four corners and one little 30 foot hill that gives us 30 foot of elevation gain. And in no pedal assist settings, so just our own legs, this did 18.9 mile an hour's average around that course, which is very, very close to that class one legal limit. In the lowest pedal assist setting, which is called Breeze, which gives us 100 watts of energy, we actually crested that class one speed of 20 miles an hour. This thing went around that one mile loop at 20.2 miles an hour, and it actually did the exact same speed in the second highest pedal assist setting called river. But in the max assist setting, the speed increased to 21.1 miles an hour. And honestly, that's probably just because you get access to the addition, the full 255 watts from the motor. We're probably seeing a little bit more acceleration up the hill and out of the corners, giving us a little bit higher average speed. But The one big takeaway from this test is that this is just a fast bike. Even before the e-bike addition to it, it pedals very, very efficiently. It rolls very, very quickly. And it's very, very easy to cruise on a flat surface at close to that class one 20 mile an hour limit. 
Where it really shines though, in which we've demonstrated in our hill test, is on hills. That motor gives a very nice amount of punch. It's like kind of having someone pushing you from behind or a very nice tailwind. But overall, this bike pedals great. So by this point in the review, you should be pretty familiar with how this bike feels as a bike below you. But you still don't know how long it lasts per charge. Well, we actually put that to the test in two different range tests. We did one test where we saw how far we could get on one charge in minimum assist, the lowest assist level on this bike. We also did a test in maximum assist where I pedaled in the highest pedal assist level on this bike. When our test rider conducted the test in minimum pedal assist, he reached 51 miles before the battery finally died. When I did the maximum pedal assist test, I reached just below 43 miles before the battery finally died. That's a pretty impressive range. Now, I was only on road and paved path during that test, and I only gained around 2,000 feet of vert. So it's safe to say the more vert you have, the shorter that mileage range is going to be. When it comes to average speeds, I hovered around 17 miles per hour on that maximum assist test, and it really kept me within the realm of normal road bike speeds without me having to expend normal road bike efforts. So as I mentioned earlier, I was able to really take in the scenery around me a lot more than I could when I'm seeing stars and huffing and puffing. So it's just a very enjoyable ride. If you're not out there to set records or prove a point, you're just out there to pedal your legs and take in the scenery, this is a great bike. And by doing a range test, we know it's going to last throughout your adventure. On the off chance you do run out of charge on that adventure, me pedaling up the hill with the bike turned completely off shows that if you're in a pinch, this thing can still pedal just about as good as a standard bike that's similar. So throughout my time on this bike, I have really tried to test it on road and off road to really see if it shines on one over the other. And if there's one I prefer riding um, on this bike one or the, over the other. Now, with that being said, it was really hard for me to decide one or the other. And to tell you the truth, I feel like this bike does both equally well. It was designed to be that way, but that didn't necessarily guarantee that was going to be the case. But I can say with confidence, as I'm transferring from on-road to off-road surfaces, like so, this bike is gonna be ready. The geometry, the gearing, how much help the battery and motor give you, and just the overall ride experience of this bike, you're gonna be comfortable whether you're on your gravel route or your road route, or a mix of both. The pedaling position is also something I really like. As I'm standing and pedaling, my, my knees are never gonna hit the handlebars, so this medium frame fits me pretty well with that being said. And as I've mentioned time and time again, this motor really picks up those watts that I fail to put down as I get fatigued. So I'm very disappointed that I didn't get to do the video review of this bike, even though I did get some time on it before I got injured. But that's because I really, really like these Bowles Performance Lightweight Electric Bikes. I previously got to test the road version of this bike, the Alpine Hawk, and I love how this Fatsua motor, wor motor works and how they just really made a bike that allows you to forget that it's an e-bike. So the Fatsua motor, the 255 watt motor on here is amazingly responsive, it's amazingly light, it's got a really, really great power band. It's a bike that I personally really enjoy, but Pierce, you were kind enough to come out and help me out after I hurt myself. What did you think of it? Well, I think you really hit it on the head with what you said about the bike, and I feel like this is a great sampler pack to sample a capable road bike, sample a capable gravel bike, and also sample a very high-end motor and battery setup. When you combine the three, it really gives you the best of all worlds, and you don't have to be confined to one um, type of riding or one terrain. And for that, I found this bike to be very fun. I had a smile on my face, especially when the assistance was on, maybe not so much when it was off, but I was able to take in the scenery around me. I was able to feel like I was putting in work, but still receiving work from the bike. Overall, I'm real satisfied with it. Awesome, and Bulls really set out here to build a bike that is affordable, that attracts the people that are, is 
curious about gravel and road, but maybe not quite willing to commit to a very high-end version of it. And they've done a great job of building a bike that is spec'd well, but an affordable price point. And I personally am really impressed with it. So if you've liked the grinder, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more updates of bike reviews and other news. And if you want to know more about this bike, there is a link in the description below to a written, more in-depth review of this bike. For Electric Bike Report, I'm Sam Gross. I'm Pierce Kettering. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.